Now comes the basic thing is security. This chapter is about security with respect to coding matter. We saw many things, models, views, various architecture, implementation with session management, cookie management, temporary data, flash data, many more things. But now important thing whenever you develop a web application is to understand that whether your application is actually secured or do we need some other kind of amendments in it. So that's what is Code Igniter security all about. So first thing we'll start with access is prevention. So what is access is it's nothing but cross site scripting thing which happens in all web application framework. Point by point, we'll go for the security perspective, starting with the cross-site scripting. So let's start with the first point. Code Igniter comes with this filtering capacity of cross-site filtering. Okay, this filter, it includes an inbuilt filter in it. So this filter helps you to prevent any kind of malicious JavaScript functionality if anything is there. If you see for Gmail servers or many other mail servers, it does not allow you to send .js file because JavaScript are more prone to have any kind of malicious code which can be prone to viral attacks and many other things. So Code Igniter has that functionality, okay? It removes this part. Whenever you put a code of Code Igniter in the server end, okay? It filters the accesses part that is the cross-site scripting functionality. Okay, so this filter will remove the JavaScript code, malicious code if it detects anything and it will, this, this kind of filtering will help you to keep it in a protective manner. Why this malicious code is important to be kept aside because these codes helps you to hijack cookie and do any kind of malicious activity. That activity can be hacking or getting inside the code or any kind of the viral attacks. So that is what it does. The basic thing is that it includes a function name XSS underscore clean. This will help you to clean all the data. Okay. So this is what is the first step which we start with the security point of view, which every web website development faces. If you have a, if you're a web developer, you launch a website, you are prone to have such kind of issues in it. So Code Igniter helps to filter this out in the initial step only. So you don't have to worry about that part. The next come is the SQL injection prevention. What is SQL injection? SQL injection is nothing but it is an attack which is done on the database query. We have MySQL over here. It can have a set of queries, many more things which is possible with respect to SQL injection thing. So Code Igniter has that thing that it helps you to remove this SQL injection part with a simple PHP function that is mysql underscore real underscore escape underscore string. This function will help you to remove that part. But this is like which is already present in code PHP as well. There is something distinguishing with respect to Code Igniter also. That's what. Code Igniter has various inbuilt function which helps you to create the queries which is like limited access and which will not at all allow in any possibility to have any SQL injection in it. So that is like done with three ways. First is like you have to escape your queries. You have to bind your queries. This is the second part and active record class. The way we call a query in our model. So let's go to code base there. I'll show you what is active record class all about. So this is my model. Okay, so I'll move to my model. First of all, inside application, I have models. I have some code inside it. So this code okay calling like set data where update so active record class is nothing but this one the code igniter has this set of queries this will not help sql injection to implement in it sql injections are very firm when it comes to understanding the basic sql like select star from student and so on but here you can't see any set of queries in that like insert into or select so that is not possible over here so that's why active record class is again a plus point which helps you to escape the queries and escape any kind of SQL injection in it. So that is like the second security step which Code Igniter provides. The next come is CSRF prevention. What is CSRF is nothing but cross site request forgery prevention. Okay, so you can prevent this attack by enabling it inside 
config.php so again moving r to our code base and move to our code base where i'll call for my config.php file so here i have my config.php file and i'll call for the csrf protection function so that is csrf underscore protection so this is csrf underscore protection is already defined in the configuration folder you just have to set this as true this true parameter will help code igniter to analyze that okay i have to increase my cross site fraud request forgery and the other parameters which are given for csrs once it's set true we need to give these parameters as well that is the token name associated cookie name the expiration date regeneration should be true or not or any kind of the uris if anything is present on it so this is what is the main thing so this was regarding the cross site forgery thing the last but not the least step for code igniter is the password handling so let's have a look like how password handling should be maintained so as you see there are many developers who do not know how to handle password in web applications okay so which is probably why numerous hackers find it so easy to break into the systems and get inside the password and hack your complete system from the scratch so it happens in such a way that it happened for linkedin also websites like linkedin also gets hacked because of such kind of any irresponsible thing which we do so password handling should be followed with some set of rules some set of protocols should be kept in mind first thing do not share your password in plain text format it is always beneficial to keep a password in md5 or any kind of the encrypted format so this will help you to save your database also and any user can cannot grab the password very easily so that is like the first step second always hash your password so hash your passwords is nothing but encrypt your password with the specified algorithm so that would be your second step do not use base 64 why i am mentioning do not not to use base 64 because base 64 is a very simple thing anyone can encode and decode and check for the password and get the output so be it's instead of base 64 move on to something new set of algorithm say for example md5 or any other set of algorithms in it next do not use any set of weak or broken hashing passwords it is always beneficial to use strong passwords strong passwords can be like alpha numeric passwords with some special characters combinations so these passwords is very easily it can be easily to hack if you use your standard password say example for your mobile number or your husband's name or something like that it's quite easily to crack and any user can get an access to it so it is better to always use a password which is strong enough and hashing algorithms should be kept so that these password can be hashed appropriately and saved in database so that any kind of the issues will be avoided in our system so this was this third point the next is you should never display your password or send your password in the plain text format the password should be saved and protected accordingly and it should be never shared to the other users okay if anything you need to share it it should be strongly kept in the protected format that is in the encrypted format so that encryption with respect to key perspective should be there so that the decryption should be evolved with the same key so that any user cannot decrypt it easily so these all parameters is very important to be taken place code igniter obviously suppose these all parts but you need to keep each and every step in the particular manner after that comes the last point that is do not put unnecessary limits on users password some limits are there for example there are some websites which keeps that okay you should have two special characters with two special symbols and many more thing you should never keep it because if you want to keep your web application user friendly you should allow a user to set a password on his own way this doesn't mean that user can set any any kind of the password and keep it and which will ha help to hack the password obviously some rules should be kept in mind but they should not be kept in a very limited stage that no your password strength should be 11 or your password strength should be 8 or so on so these all limitations should be removed this is like as per my suggestion you should remove all these inside your system and completely keep your password to be password protected with encryption point of view so that if anything happens in future you will have a key in your hand with respect to that key only you can 
help to uh, uh, like decrypt the password and open min my system so these all functionalities takes place while uh, when it comes to security module in code igniter project now we'll move to the next uh, level of the chapters like understanding various parameters file uploading form handling error handling measurements so these all measurements should be maintained with the security perspective so that every user can keep in mind that yes security is the first priority which should be kept while developing a web application the next step is about page redirection so let's go to our routes.php here we had a look about how we route a particular file with respect to the redirected path and how we get inside our web application system so here we had a basic examples where each and every controller were routed with a particular name and it was access that name given to the web application and we used to route it accordingly so now in this chapter we are going to focus on the page redirection like a particular page re redirection calling for a particular url for example you want to click on some url and go to google.com so such kind of page redirection like if you call for a function in a controller and it accesses google.com so that kind of scenarios we can create in code igniter with a concept which is called as page redirection so here we'll start with creating a first thing that a new file and this file will be our controller so let's save our file inside application controllers and the name of the file will be redirect controller so i'll mention the name as redirect underscore controller dot php so this is my file and inside this i'm going to create my file for redirection so first of all i'll mention my class name as class and the name of the class will be redirect underscore controller so the file name and class name should match so it will be class redirect underscore controller and we are going to extend our class so it will be extends ci underscore controller so in this way we are going to perform our operation and inside this i'll call for the first function that is the index function so public function index inside this i'm going to specify some arguments so before that i'll mention a comment that this calls for default function so because it's a default function so i'll call for the default function with the helpers so first thing i'll call for the helper so loading the helper is my first primary task over here so let's start with that like dollar this load helper and the helper will call for the function which is called, called as a url parameter so i'll say url and inside url i will get all the associated parameters for url so this was with respect to the helper after that we need to redirect our website to some site so i'll say on focus of default function will redirect to some website which is hosted live and which is quite popular so redirect the user to google that's the best site we know so clicking on index function or calling for the index function will redirect to the google website so i'll say http www.google.co.in so this is my website i just just included everything with the respect to redirect function so i have done with this part so my public function index has been uh, declared after that i'll say another function which is for computer graphics so that function will call for a wiki page of computer graphics so i'll say public function computer graphics and inside that i'll pass my i'll pass the helper logic the way we did for index function so load the url helper so i'll just include that in the comment section and there i'll say dollar this load and helper so helper will call for a url parameter and inside that i'll call for a url which is 
calling for the helper wiki page so i'll go to my browser so inside browser i'll check my wiki page for computer graphics this is just a demo example to show that how computer we can redirect a page from a particular function in the controller or a default function in the controller so this is my wiki page for computer graphics so on clicking of this particular function that is the computer graphics function it should call for the computer graphics wiki page so here i will load i'll just uh, copy paste the url in the comment section that would be easy and feasible for me so the next comment is to redirect to computer graphics wiki page so we, uh, computer graphics section will be redirected with the function that is redirect so here i'll mention as http the complete uh, url for wiki page will be included over here so i just take this parameter and after that so this is how we completed for uh, controller section we created two functions with index and computer graphics which included uh, like two parameters over here the one was for, for google and the other one was for the wiki page of computer graphics now inside routes.php i am going to route this particular file so i'll set the parameter as dollar route and the parameter will be redirect and the redirect parameter will call for redirect controller which we created now so i say redirect controller and i will just use the computer graphics function also over here so that will be called as dollar out redirect computer graphics so it will call for the computer graphics function so i'll just say redirect controller i'll just copy this particular name instead of in, to avoid any kind of mistakes so here i'll say computer graphics so on saving it we should check on our browser like are we getting the output which is which, as the way it is needed so let's go to our browser first so you have verified the parameters over here here also we forgot to mention the redirection like computer graphics so we need to give the proper functionality the way we need it so this part is done now after that what is the next thing is to verify in our browser like are we getting it so you just load it as redirect this parameter was set in browser parameter yes so redirect will call for the default function of index and index automatically calls for google.co.l so this was the way of verification so now you can get a better picture like why redirection is all about now inside redirect now i'm calling for computer graphics wiki page so it should call for the wiki page so i'll call for function so automatically it loads the wiki page so with the help of redirect function here we can create or we can create a logic associated to it which includes like a redirection from one page to another it may happen that sometimes you load a page and you want to redirect to outside your website or say some payment gateway or something this is just an example to understand in such a scenario code igniter supports a best part which is called as a redirection which redirects from one page to another page so this is a primary feature with respect to code igniter which a developer can keep it in mind if you want to redirect you can just pass it with the help of a function which is called as redirect and specify the url which is needed for your redirect functionality so that was all about redirection in code igniter framework